Back with some more speed tests, we have the Mac Mini M2 Pro on the left hand side, equipped with 32 gigabytes of RAM and pretty much decked to the top. And on the right, we have the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip. This contains 128 gigabytes of RAM, so not really a fair fight, but a few of us are curious, so we're just gonna make this one a quick run through, short and sweet, just to see where your money goes. The Mac Mini Pro comes in at $2,100 right now, and the Mac Studio, this version, beefed up to 128 gigs, is around 6,000-ish dollars depending on your storage options so big difference and we're getting into the real pro editing territory where speed really counts huge files huge projects that's when you really need to step up to this mac studio but for a lot of us just making videos for fun making videos for youtube this Mac Mini Pro is going to last you many years and be able to crank out a bunch of work for you. So very intriguing where the market's going and where we're headed. But let's start it off in Premiere Pro. We're going to open up a recent session I did and we'll just see how fast that renders. And then we'll do a couple export tests real fast. So let's take it away. All right, let's start with a little render into out. This is a bunch of yellow I see in these timelines, so let's see how fast they go. Okay, the Mini Pro finished up. Let's export this in ProRes 422 and see how these new media engines perform. Let's try this in H.264. We're going to do our favorite YouTube 4K preset. Okay, the Mini Pro just finished up, took 50 seconds longer. Let's open up a couple After Effects sessions and see how well it performs in there. We had really good results actually from our speed test with the Mini Pro versus the M1 Max. The Mini Pro beat the Max, so you can check that out up in the corner if you are interested in seeing some more speed tests. So here's a After Effects template from Motion Array. Press and play, right away you can see that the Ultra is obviously playing a little faster. Able to keep up a little more frames per second. Let's just double check and make sure we've got everything loaded up correctly in the memory allocation. And then we'll do a couple export tests. Okay, so I've dropped in the maximum amount that we can on each machine. The Mac Mini Pro is running 26 gigabytes, while the M1 Ultra has 116 gigabytes running now. So we are gonna see some speed now. So just press and play, we saw it took the Mac Mini Pro a little bit to catch up, but it's definitely hanging tough. Let's do a ProRes 422 export and see how this does. Okay, wow, that was really interesting. The 
Mini Pro, finish first. Let's try doing this whole sequence. That'll give it a little more time to run. So I didn't even have time to hit the stopwatch. Okay, that's a little more of what I expected, but you see this Mini Pro is flying. I have a session from a viewer who kindly sent me their After Effects session, and I am no pro in After Effects. I, I know the basics, but let's check out what a real pro can do. His name is Marilo, and I'll put his contact info down below if you're looking for the real deal motion graphics guy. He's your man. So let's open up his session and see how long that all takes. Okay, so just pressing play right away, this is impressive because I just ran this on the M1 Max and it could not keep up with Murillo's session. And there's a lot of lines, a lot of shapes, a lot of motion going on. The M2 Mini Pro, wow, I am super impressed with it. If you need a low budget After Effects machine, if you've kind of outgrown your britches on your laptop, check out these M2 Pros if you've got the budget for it. So this, the one on the left is loaded up with one terabyte of storage and then fully beefed up on everything else. I came to 2,100 bucks, so insane prices, insane tech and speed that we're getting. Let's put it through ProRes 422 and H.264 exports again, see how fast we're talking. This is what I mean, whatever they did to that M2 Mini Pro media engine is crazy. It beat, <laughs> it beat the Ultra. I mean, this is insane. I thought it was impressive it beat the M1 Max. Now it's beating the M1 Ultra. My goodness, the Mini Pro is a beast. This is crazy. $2,000 versus $6,000, no problem. Get yourself a motion graphics machine, 2000 bucks. Solid. Okay, one more template from Motion Array. I just gotta make sure that this is correct because this is nuts. I am blown away. So if you're a motion graphics After Effects person and you're in the market for a new machine, the Mini Pro, you will not feel bad now about getting that instead of the M1 Ultra. If you can deal with a hub and a dongle, there's no SD card reader for the Mini Pro, unfortunately, so you're stuck in dongle hub land. But if you're okay with that, this M2 Pro chip is awesome. I'm gonna run these same tests for the MacBook M2 Max that we have here. That's loaded with 96 gigabytes of RAM. 
So I think the next step up in speed is going to be that M2 Max is going to crush everything else. The M1 Ultra? No. No problem. I mean, we're going to have to see what this M2 Pro coming out in a couple months is like what kind of contender that is, but a really good value for motion graphics after effects people. This is awesome. So I hope this helped get some more eyeballs on here. I hope it helped cement your decision on which machine to buy. Really appreciate everyone watching these and I hope to see you at the next one. Take care. <laughs>